fix it on the inner most consciousness which is the source of peace and joy let us pray for the welfare of the whole humanity ante shanti peace 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 be unto all om स्थापकाय च धर्म सेवधर्मस्वूपिणे स्थापकाय च धर्म सेवधर्मस्वूपिणे अवतारवरिष्ठा रामकृष्णा ते नम असतो मदगम तमसो मोतिर्गम असतो मदगम तमसो मोतिर्गम मृत्योर्मातंगम ओं शाति 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 लटस् प्रियवर सेल्युटेशन टू श्री रामकृष्ण who gave practical spirituality to the whole humanity let us pray to him to lead us from unreal to the real from darkness to light of knowledge from death to immortality master mahashay when he came in touch with sri ramakrishna in the course of masters talking with him <coughs> one thing most remarkable master mahashay felt was that sri ramakrishna presented the highest spiritual wisdom the spiritual knowledge in utterly simple words it was amazing to him to have seen a person of such caliber here is a person who is intensely spiritual whose expressions are actorly simple <laughs> that is a very important observation which master mahashay did it is exactly true the men of realization are always very simple extremely simple they have found out that if a person had to see god he should be 100% simple that means he should be free from egoism the devotee who has realized god is very certain that it is not he is doing any things in this world it is everything done by god and god alone it is god's will that everything is happening he is firmly convinced of this fact so he is always at peace and joy when master mahashay first came to see shri ram krishna and then he began to come second and third time he was attracted to shri ram krishna's nectarious words when shri ram krishna came to know that master mahashay had married he was very sorry further when shri ramakrishna came to know that he had children again he became very sorry master mahashay began to think deeply why shri ramakrishna is feeling sorry over this is it a sin to marry is it a sin to have children 
Is it a sin to have house and properties? Is it a sin to love one's own kithankin? All these questions flashed in his mind. <coughs> Now the point here is Sri Ramakrishna is not seeing this as a sin. No, that was not his intention at all. Then why did he become sorry? <coughs> That's a very important question we should understand properly. When Sri Ramakrishna came to know that Master Mahashe had married, he became sorry because he has bound himself. The bondage, what we call samsar, bandhan, he has got himself tied down. Then, he is having children in course of time, again tying down himself. Why? Because mind gets attached to these things. And his mind is becoming so much busy with things of the world and he will never find time to think of God. That means the person he could have avoided getting into bondage But anyway, he has entered into householder's life. That means he is in bondage. So what is to be done? How many people do really know that they have lost their way in the forest? Many people think that they are going in the right way. It's only after a long time of walking through and through they could not find a way out, then they will come to conclude that they have lost the way in the forest. Exactly same with respect to the samsaric life. We don't know how we are being dragged, out, dragged down to various things connected with this life. The mind slowly and slowly sinks down, becomes heavy, heavier and heavier on account of the weight of the attachment towards things of the world, towards the unreality and then he has lost the way. But then if he really feels for it, if he feels that, has, that he has lost his way, then God shows him the way by showering grace on him. So only few people who learn <coughs> through suffering. <coughs> Most of the people do not learn at all like camel eating the thorny bush, though the blood is oozing out, still it never stops eating thorny bush. So people are like that, even though they are undergoing lot of suffering and misery in the world, they do not give up attachment. So they are completely lost. So, now Sri Ramakrishna only wanted to know whether he has been in bondage 
or he is on the threshold now he so shri ram krishna came to know that he is married so now what is to be done now somebody has to guide a person who knows if fairest ways alone can guide people to get out of the forest in the same way men of spirituality can only lead people who are lost in the way so that is the important point that we should know here and that is why shri ramakrishna very emphatically points out that to see god there are some means you must go to solitude now and then spend some time repeating the divine name singing his glories contemplating on him so on and so forth at the same time you must initiate which are that is discrimination you must have the discriminating attitude you must cultivate the attitude of discrimination that is distinguishing distinguishing between what is real what is not real what is good what is bad what things take towards god what things do not take towards him all these things are called vichar shakti we must develop that we have that potency in us we must develop we must cultivate and try to discriminate once you are clear about the thing then be decisive be decisive when you know it is dangerous you must not step into that when you know such a thing is harmful you must not aspire for it so one has to find out oneself by applying the intellect then he should slowly but steadily turn inward go god word and the effectiveness of uh, getting into the spiritual path is possible only if we have a yearning heart shri ramakrishna stresses this point very well in the passages which i read last time yearning heart how many how many people do really yearn for god people yearn for money people yearn for doing so many things for property for acquiring wealth well but how many people do really yearn for god people cry crave for the worldly things <laughs> so <clears throat> here shri ram krishna points out cry for god that cry should be real not hypocritical again shri ram krishna points out how god is to be approached by the combined force of three attractions the attraction which the worldly man possesses towards worldly or worldly things the attraction the mother child the child cherishes with its mother the attraction between child and its mother the third one 
the attraction between the husband and the chaste wife so if one could approach god by the combined force of these attractions one cannot but see god the point here which sri ramakrishna wants to emphasize is that to love god in all sincerity love him so in order to pinpoint this sri ramakrishna explains giving all these examples love with a yearning heart pray to him with all love he gives the example of cat and kitten wherever the cat puts the kitten it it lays there whenever it wants the kitten wants something it cries mew mew like that wherever the cat may be it is very sensitive immediately it runs to its child in the same way if we cry to mother the divine mother she will not keep even for a moment away from the child she will immediately run and take all care about it another point which sri ramakrishna has uh, stressed the persons who want to have spiritual path and who are seeking perfection who want to see god they should be very careful about their association that means they should never be associated with the people of uh, wicked nature people who are not interested in spirituality people who always criticize god and all things connected with it shri ramakrishna warns that we should never have any association with such type of people it doesn't mean that we should uh, criticize them or we should disrespect them no it doesn't mean any, any of these things he only th- means keep away from such people keep away and he gives the example of the tiger true god is everywhere god is in the tiger also but does it mean that you should go and hug the tiger so people say people warn you look there is a tiger don't go there in that way it will pounce upon you the person who is warning is also god so you must not be stupid you must use your common sense when doing the things shri ramakrishna <clears throat> how very nicely explained all the spiritual truths by giving beautiful examples again he gave the example of <clears throat> elephant and mahut a disciple who was well trained by the teacher that god is present everywhere so once he was going to the forest to gather the wood after some time they found an elephant was coming fast running and people around they were all scared they all ran away the mahut the person who controls the elephant he shouting from the top don't come near go away go away but this boy who thought what my teacher has taught me god is everywhere god is in this elephant why should i be afraid of it he stood but then elephant did what it wanted to do it simply took him and threw him aside by its trunk 
then of course the boy was taken to the hermitage and the bruises were all dressed and when he regained consciousness they all came to know what happened then the teacher said don't you know that the mouth also is guard he warned you not to come near the elephant that's it and shri ramakrishna gives another very fine example water for example water water itself is god all the panch mahabhutas agni vayu all these are different manifestations of god but then there are some water which are used only for washing the dirty linen some water is used only for washing the utensils and some is used for worship so like that though the water is same but yet everything has got its purpose in the same way though god is present everywhere we should be careful in understanding the things and take proper steps that's what he meant so so far we have read that is uh, from page 82 to 85 now i shall continue to read then i shall ask for your comments <coughs> page 85 a devotee asked shri ramakrishna sir if a wicked man is about to do harm or actually does so should we keep quiet then very beautiful question what did as master answer he said a man living in society should make a show of tamas to protect himself from evil minded people but he should not harm any body in anticipation of harm likely to be done him very positive instruction is given here that is we should not take any retaliatory measures we should not have revengeful attitude that's what shri ramakrishna meant listen to a story some cowherd boys used to tend their cows in a meadow where a terrible poisonous snake lived every one was on the alert for fear of it one day a brahmachari was going along the meadow the boys ran to him and said revere it sir please don't go that way a venomous snake lives over there what of it my good children said the brahmachari i am not afraid of the snake i know some mantras so saying he continued on his way along the meadow but the cowherd boys being afraid didn't accompany him in the meantime the snake moved swiftly toward him with upraised hood as soon as it came near he recited a mantra and the snake lay at his feet like an earthworm the brahmachari said look here why do you go about doing harm come i will give you a holy word by repeating it you will learn to love god ultimately you will realize him and so get rid of your violent nature saying this he taught the snake a holy word and initiated him into spiritual life the snake bowed before the teacher and said revere it sir how shall i practice spiritual discipline repeat this that sacred word said the teacher and do no harm to any body as he was about to depart the brahmachari said i shall see you again some days passed and the cowherd boys noticed that the snake would not bite 
they threw stones at it still it showed no anger behaved as if it were an earthworm one day one of the boys came close to it caught it by the tail and whirling it round and round dashed it again and again on the ground and threw it away the snake vomited blood and became unconscious it was stunned it could not move so thinking it dead the boys went their way late at night the snake regained consciousness slowly and with great difficulty it dragged itself into its hole its bones were broken and it could scarcely move many days passed the snake became a mere skeleton covered with a skin now and then at night it would come out in search of food for fear of the boys it would not leave its hole during the daytime since receiving the sacred word from the teacher it had given up doing harm to others it maintained its life on dirt leaves or the fruit that dropped from the trees about a year later the brahmachari came that way again and asked after the snake the coward boys told him that it was dead but he couldn't believe them he knew that the snake would not die before attaining the fruit of the holy word with which it had been initiated he found his way to the place <coughs> and searching here and there <coughs> called it by the name he had given it here in the teacher's voice it came out of its hole and bowed before him with great reverence how are you asked the brahmachari i am well sir replied the snake but the teacher asked why are you so thin the snake replied revered sir you ordered me not to harm any body so i have been living only on leaves and fruit perhaps that has made me thinner the snake had developed the quality of sattva it could not be angry with anyone it had totally forgotten that the coward boys had almost killed it the brahmachari said it can't be mere want of food that has reduced you to this state there must be some other reason think a little then the snake remembered that the boys had dashed it against the ground it said Yes, Reverend Sir. Now I remember. The boys one day dashed me violently against the ground. They are ignorant of trial. They didn't realize what a great change had come over my mind. How could they know? I wouldn't bite or harm anyone. The Brahmachari exclaimed, "What a shame! You are such a fool. You don't know how to protect yourself. I asked you not to bite, but I didn't forbid you to hiss. Why didn't you scare them by hissing?" that's important teaching so all the spiritual seekers should note in this creation of god there is a variety of things men animals trees plants among the animals some are good some bad there are ferocious animals like a tiger some trees bear fruit sweet as nectar and others bear fruit that is poisonous likewise among human beings there are the good and the wicked the holy and the unholy there are some who are devoted to god and others who are attached to the world men may be divided into four classes those bound by the fetters of the world secondly the seekers after liberation thirdly the liberated and fourthly the ever free among the ever free we may count sages like narada they live in the world for the good of others to teach men spiritual truth those in bondage are sunk in worldliness and forgetful of god not even by mistake do they think of god the seekers after liberation want to free themselves from attachment to the world some of them succeed and others do not the liberated souls such as the sadhus and mahatmas are not entangled in the world in woman and gold their minds are free from worldliness besides they always meditate on the lotus feet of god suppose a net has been cast into a lake to catch fish some fish are so clever that they never caught in the net 
they are like the ever free but most of the fishes are entangled in the net some of them try to free themselves from it and they are like those who seek liberation <clears throat> but not all the fish <clears throat> that struggle succeed <clears throat> a very few do jump out of the net making a big splash in the water then the fisherman shout look there goes a big one but most of the fish caught in the net cannot escape nor do they make any effort to get out on the contrary they burrow and into the mud with the net in their mouths and lie there quietly thinking we need not fear any more we are quite safe here but the poor things do not know that the fishermen will drag them out with the net these are like the men bound to the world the bound souls are tied to the world by the fetters of women and gold they are bound hand and foot thinking that women and gold will make them happy and give them security they do not realize that it will lead them to annihilation when a man thus bound to the world is about to die his wife asks you are about to go but what have you done for me again such is his attachment to the things of the world that when he sees the lamp burning brightly he says dim the light too much oil is being used and he is on his deathbed the bound souls never think of god if they get any leisure they indulge in idle gossip and foolish talk or they engage in fruitless work if you ask one of them the reason he answers oh i can't keep still so i am making a hedge when time hangs heavy on their hands they perhaps start playing cards there is deep silence in the room we shall stop here you must not show that you are uh, not doing uh, any harm to them but uh, if such people behave that way you should at least show outwardly that they should be afraid of to come near you but inwardly you should never uh, harbor any revenge against such people but you should not show them anything so in beginning itself you should be careful what sort of people we should uh, be associated with and try to avoid them so like that you must uh, adopt your own methods the here methods are given in a very general way we can find out in your own way what best you can do but the principle is this whatever it may be the point is the snake is there true the snake is going the snake is coming true i know the snake is uh, very poisonous and it may bite so it doesn't mean that you should uh, strike it and you must kill it no don't kill it but don't go in the way of the snake let it go avoid the snake that's the point so that is how we should deal with uh, wicked people also instead of judging them whether they are wicked or not best thing is to judge ourselves whichever is harmful to me i will take measures so that to avoid uh, such things to happen it is difficult no doubt i understand it is difficult but though it is difficult you have to follow for example uh, suppose a person is employed in a place where uh, he may not have a good company at all so if it comes to that point he must uh, relinquish that job he must take some other job it is not that he should live in the company of the snakes and at the same time how he should manage with these snakes because one has to sacrifice something so for example if one if 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 a person uh, comes in contact with a, a a drug dealer he may get a lot of money true but do you want that type of money that's important on the other hand rather I, i may not have money doesn't matter whatever my little money i have got with the job what i do that's enough that means you must uh, must not have too many desires i want five cars i want uh, 10 bungalows i want this that if you multiply the desires then whatever money you earn may not be sufficient so that is how we have to apply our discrimination and uh, these spiritual qualities we must develop in our uh, daily life to be content to the extent what we get we are not bothered if we don't get you must have that attitude have them but not at the cost of the things itself if you want 
If, if it comes, it's all right. If it doesn't come also, it's all right. So that is the way. Otherwise, even though a person may be employed somewhere, uh, he may not get uh, the sufficient money. That is why the, why the people take, or, take to robbery, etc. Because they get quick. Immediately they can get uh, 100,000 dollars simply by stealing. True, but the effect is very dangerous. It affects the mind, it affects the uh, whole personality and it spoils him completely. Now the point is this, we are not telling that uh, once he had entered into a family life he should abandon his family. No, we are not telling. In fact, Sri Ramakrishna himself scolded a devotee who wanted to stay with Sri Ramakrishna and keeping his wife and children in a father-in-law's place. What? Are you not ashamed? Do you want to, somebody else to look after your wife and children? Are you not ashamed of it? Go and join some job, earn money and look after them well. So he was lazy to work and he was not doing his duty properly, looking after the wife and children. Do you think that neighbors will come and look after them? Like that he warrant. The point here is this. Family life is all right for those who have taken that life. It is not for criticizing Sri Ramakrishna has pointed out this. He only he has pointed out what is bondage. What is this bondage? That is spreading the net of attachment is called bondage. Spreading the net of attachment. We easily become attached when we enter into such type of life. Now the point is, nothing is half done, you must know. Life is itself a challenge. You have to face many challenges in life. True. We have to face it. That is our way. But the point is, how do you face them? Face them intelligently. Then you will find the way. And life it is a continuous process. It is not just uh, this uh, birth you have taken and after this all over. No. It is not like that. You may say it is over. But the circumstances will push you to take another birth and go pass through other type of experiences. But the point is this, each one is struggling to get into that uh, spiritual realm. Some people become aware of it early, but some people become aware of it later. But uh, we are all practicing, no doubt. Each one is judged only by one's own realization. Up up till then, nobody can say he has made uh, very high spiritual progress in life, nobody can judge that. God alone can judge. So, let us be more and more humble, but practice all the warnings which Sri Ramakrishna has given again and again, uh, so that wherever we are, it is for the family people only, Sri Ramakrishna is telling. Now and then you must uh, try to get into a holy association, you must try to and go into solitude and think of God. You must positively do that. You must make the effort because mind naturally doesn't go towards them because mind is already going towards other things. Mind uh, has get into attraction with so many worldly things, with so many things going on in the world. I want to attend the game, the soccer game. Mind is running there. So I am prepared to spend three hours seeing the TV, but I am not prepared to spend spend five minutes in doing meditation. So you can ask yourself how the mind is uh, cooperating, in what way it is cooperating you. Whatever we like it, we have excuses, we have reasons to, uh, to defend them. But when there is no interest, then we give reasons. 
So half-heartedness will not help. If you want God, you must uh, love Him and you must uh, want Him sincerely. That's the way. That uh, you will develop when you come constantly come in touch with holy people and read sacred books. Keeping the mind always in these ideas is very important. Very important. But how, uh, what we find, in fact, last time when I had been to Florida, I had been to uh, one place there. There, West Palm Beach, I think, West Palm Beach. There, one devotee family. I observed the child, about eight years old, sitting before the TV, whole uh, three, four hours at a stretch. I was amazed and I, I mean, in fact I was shocked to see that and I asked the mother, what is this? Child will not go to sleep, night, hardly 11 o'clock and the mother is telling how she, uh, the child is, it is enjoying the TV. <laughs> see how when the mind, that means it likes it again and again, again and again, seeing TV, 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 TV all the time. So the mind is full of TV only. Where do you find God and how, oh, what can we do, how to develop the quality in our children? You can't develop quality in children if you give such kind of training in the home. So that's the point. So Sri Ramakrishna is giving here instructions how to, first of all, how we must live the life and how, must, how we must give training to our children. All these things are dealt with here in course of his teachings you will come across so many passages.